Mike O'Mara, Radio Entertainment. Today's episode of the Mike O'Mara Show is brought to you by our bonus packages. Please go to MikeO'MaraShow.com and click on the bonus banner. You'll get access to all of our bonus content, and even better, you'll be helping out TMOS. So please, quit sucking, and we thank you. Available on demand every day in iTunes and the Google Play Store and around the world on MikeO'MaraShow.com. What more can we do for you? It's the Mike O'Mara Show. Welcome to the Mike O'Mara Show. Running a little bit late, a few technical glitches on the last minute show. And uh, what we want to do is we want to bring in the uh, captain of the hard merchandise from one of my favorite shows, Wicked Tuna. Because I am a fan of Wicked Wicked Tuna and the 90 minute season finale. uh, That marks the 100th episode. That is this Sunday at 9 p.m. on Nat Geo. I am very, very pleased to welcome Dave Marciano, who happens to be of all the Wicked Tuna captains we could have gotten. We happen to have my favorite. And, uh, Dave, good to have you on the show. Thanks for having me. Uh, So are you in Gloucester now? Are you traveling? Where are you now, Captain? Uh, Actually, I am in New Hampshire. I drove up this morning to be on one of our local radio stations up here. I just got done with an interview there about... 20 minutes ago, and I went in studio for that one. Well, you know what? I uh, I love Wicked Tuna. I, it is uh, here's here's the thing. You know these fishing shows. There's a different, and I have to stack you ag- up against the Mac Daddy, which is Deadliest Catch. Right. Where Deadliest Catch? There's yeah, yeah, a lot yeah, more. yeah. They understand. They they pay. Look, they uh, they kind of blaze the trail for shows yeah. like this. And and Wicked Tuna. The thing that I love about Wicked Tuna is that it's constant fishing yeah it's constantly Mm, and that's what as a a person that look there are people that love fishing shows like i do and then there are people that don't for the people that do i have to tell you that just the process of when you get the fish on that's the whole thing for me i i love the drama but i'm going to compliment you uh and i don't want to there's no spoiler alert here but uh i know in the last episode uh you got your whole family on the boat and my question to you how because when you're fighting a fish for two hours and that moment yeah. of truth comes, and you literally see the fish—the fish that could be five yeah. to ten to twelve thousand dollars <laughs> in your pocket—and that yeah. line snaps, and you lose it at the last minute. You have the best attitude. Yeah, I, I, you are zen uh, on that boat. How do you keep it together on that boat? Is uh, you know, are you? Uh, is is it is it drugs and alcohol, Dave? Is, <laughs> is that what it is? <laughs> no, not what we're all fishing. That's for sure. And, okay. You know, look, part of it too is. I think part of it is because I have my kids on the boat. Uh, but look, let's be honest. That stuff builds up, right? I'm not perfect. You, 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 if you watch, you've seen what I have, my um, little episodes, I guess. <laughs> yeah, you um, meltdown, right. <laughs> right? Hey, hey, look, that's what happens. You know, you try and be cool. You try and stay focused. But over a long season, you know, ultimately you get to that point where you, you know, You've stubbed your toe one too many times, and and it's all going to come out. You know, how would you? Uh, how how would you? Ra- how it's not healthy. Yeah. How would you rate the last uh, uh, season? When I say season, I mean your that's your not just yeah. the television season, but your sure. fishing season. A little little sure. rough for the uh, for the for the hat merchandise, you know, wasn't it? Right, right. No, it was tough. Right. We you know we didn't win, but you know in the big picture, uh, in the business picture you know we stayed in business another year we made a little bit of money and the crew made a paycheck and you know kind of the wheel got got turned you know for one more season so in the big picture that's all important you know you you gotta stay in the game if you want to keep playing it right yeah we're talking to uh captain dave marciano he's the captain of the hard merchandise uh He's been a, a, a fishing fixture, I love saying that, <gasps> off the coast of Gloucester for more than, or I should say properly, Gloucester, uh, for more than uh, 30 years. I have, a, you know, I have so many questions for you. I know, Oscar, you wanted to ask him yeah, something so, as well. Uh, Dave, uh, Captain, thank you so much for coming on the program. I am completely infatuated with the idea of ever going on one of these boats. Yeah. Does it ever get yep. old when you when you bring up a 900-pounder and you're like, oh, my God, I can't believe we have this cartoon-sized fish on the actual <laughs> yeah, boat? Because yeah. sometimes, the, no, sometimes no, the fish look like they're going to sink the boat. <laughs> All right. No, no, look, that's definitely very cool. You know, we're very fortunate. Look, we, we fish these fish. I like all kinds of fishing, you know, from, from trout fishing and everything else in the middle. 
You know what I mean? I, I, as a kid, I grew up lo- loving fishing, and that's how I, you know, wound up where I'm at. And we're just very lucky. We have these giant bluefin tuna in our backyard. That's what's swimming here. You know, <laughs> if, if it weren't for tuna, though, I'd be fishing for something else. But we're just very fortunate. That's what we have here to work on, you know, for four or five months of the year. Now, reading, uh, reading your bio, I see that you hold the distinction of having survived a 2003 shipwreck uh, where <laughs> yeah. you were off the coast 18 miles offshore and I guess you were in a storm, and the hull uh, gave well, way, and and you sank in thirty three yeah, minutes. Really a storm. Look, look, this, this is, you know, you make it sound great, right? Okay. Uh, <laughs> look, you know, you know, we, you know, we, we we lost the boat. That was the first boat I owned. I owned it for about twelve years. The, the name of that boat was Angelica Joseph. It was an old wooden boat. You know, again, right. when when you get into a business like fishing, you know, you don't have the money to go out and buy, you know, the fancy boat um so at the time that was old wooden boat but she had good paperwork and that's what we looked for you know the proper permits to be a commercial fisherman because if you don't have permits you can't go out there and harvest fish you gotta have the right paperwork and uh you know that boat was a good old boat but she was an old wooden boat a 38 year old wooden boat and uh you know we, we were running the mail in the winter time it was january 13 2003 um and we were coming home we had a load of fish in the boat we had you know, ten thousand pounds of pollock on deck that were worth about a buck forty a pound, and you know that was the fourth or fifth day in a row we were lugging fish like that. We were one of the last boats of the season still on the fish, so we were getting those premium prices. And uh, a plank let go, and you know ultimately we lost the boat. Thirty-three uh, minutes, but, Jeez, that's know, scary though. Yeah. Not much time to think in that. Yeah, time. and that was with lots of you know emergency pumps, but you know we knew right away there was other fishermen out there. And right away when we had problems, you know, one of the other captains, you know, got in real close to us. So, like, we knew as long as we didn't do anything stupid, you know, and get trapped inside the boat or do anything careless, you know, if the boat did go down, there was another fisherman literally driving alongside us, you know, less than 100 feet away. All right. So, So, you you know what I mean? Like, we tried to save the boat and we couldn't, but, you know, again, we did hit the water for a little while, but. You know, we're here to tell the story. Dave, um, I'm curious. My father is a massive fan of your show, and you're his favorite. Do you ever do <laughs> charters that a, 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 yes, we do. a yes, guy we off do. the street yeah, could go almost, fishing with you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Almost all the boats do it. If people are interested uh, in fishing with us, I'm going to give you my website. Cool. Yeah. It's FV, as in fishing vessel, hardmerchandise.com. Cool. Thank you. Right. Gotcha. I'll need you. I'd like to do that. Page. All right, yeah, I need you to bring your boat up to Maine, though. I need you to bring that up there. <laughs> um, no, no, no. You all right. Come down to us. <laughs> all, right, all right, I'll come down. I know. Hey, you know well, what? Well, you're uh, a Bob, captain, Mike. Yeah, you can you're do it. You're a captain. You know uh, what's I going on. I am on the water. I'm on the New England water, so I know yeah. I'm in New England. I'm, I'm actually, uh, here's the way this is working, Dave, in case you don't know. You're talking to my two guys. We're our base of operation, the Podcast Village in Washington, D.C. I am up okay. in Hancock, Maine, right across from Bar Harbor. Uh-huh. So I'm on the coast yep, of the... Okay, uh, cool. Yeah, that is cool. He I know, fishes it sounds for like clams. You're yeah. um, so the, the yeah, one it question is. I... Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very cool. I got one last question before we let you go, because uh, we had some technical issues, got to you late. but And I know this is probably putting yeah. you on the spot, probably can't answer this, but of all the other boats, and I'm talking hypothetically, I know that in no way would Dave Marciano wish ill on any other captain. It is not the code of the sea. It is not the way it works. But if you, if God, this is a complete hypothetical situation, Dave, God was sitting there in front of you and said, okay, in order to save all the, the fishermen of the world, one of the boats in your fleet, one of the guys that is on Wicked Tuna has to, you know, has to have a, I won't even say the boat sinks no, no, no. or the entire crew is An lost. incident. I'll say, I'll say that, uh, that their engine blows and they can't go out for a season. All right. And that's totally hypothetical. What is the boat and uh, captain that you would pick? Show, out of all yes. the boats in the show, yes. I would say my boat because I, I would still want the other guys to Aww. do well. Aww. Oh, boo. Oh, come on. Right. The pinwheel. Okay. TJ, <laughs> he's not, not the pinwheel. He's, it's not the pinwheel. <laughs> <laughs> that guy's a jerk. That won't get me in <laughs> All right, you're a good man, and I love. By the way, I love the way you treat your family. Yeah, it's very your cool. Your kids, uh, your daughter, uh, you know, she. It's just wonderful, and I, I wish you good luck with the uh, the TV show and the season. And uh, maybe I'll drive down to Gloucester and book a charter with you. That'd be fun. Yes, sir. Please do. Thank you, Dave Marciano. Thank you, from, Captain. Uh, 
Wicked Tuna, thank you very thank much, you. Dave. And uh, let me see. Uh, Wicked Tuna, the 90-minute season finale, which they sent me uh, an advanced copy of, and then left out the ending. Matt oh. Geo doesn't t- trust anybody, but they left in lots of stuff about that finger. Uh, they, yeah, they, the guy that oh. loses a finger. Oh. Yeah, that's, that's the guy I don't like, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> do you know the Do you watch the show regularly? I have Rob? watched it. The one that I thought that he would say is, I think his name is Paul Ebert. That's the Wicked Pissa. Because yeah, the wicked that's pissa, the, we got, we agree. <laughs> that's you and me. We agree. The wicked pissa, yeah. like P I S S A H. And I like asked I my dad, go to any restaurant in Maine that says lobster A H. I like, asked my dad about me. that. I said, "What do you think of this guy in the wicked pissa?" He says he has a new crew every year. Do you think he gets along with anybody? No, <laughs> no. no. The wicked pissa. He's the guy that's just like da 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 da. Pin the pinwheel. Yeah. The captain is Tyler, right? Yeah. Tyler's like the hunk on the show, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, but half the time. How can you choose though among all the captains? <laughs> well, I, I wouldn't. I well, would not describe him necessarily well, I as mean, a hunk. Okay. Well, <laughs> at least I, I, at least know. for my for my wonderful wife, right? The hunk. Well, like eight of the nine guys look like Pony. So I mean, uh, let's let's oh. be honest with you. You know, I mean, <laughs> she said no, she goes. You, you could you could go to Gloucester right now and get picked up on a fishing boat <laughs> just by walking down to the dock. But the me. problem with Pony is that he would get on a boat and they would check him for the the fat content. It would be too low. <laughs> he would only bring about two bucks a pound. Yeah, you're cool. Your core isn't dark enough. <laughs> but I I interrupted you, Oscar, because obviously you're... Yeah, let's talk men. It's fine. So, he, <laughs> so the pinwheel is... I mean, he's just... He's got, like, the Rossifarian flag. You know he's smoking a ton of spliffs out on that water, sure. allegedly. And, I, and I'm like, how does this guy get any fish? And on the show, whether they edit it the, the way they do, and I'm sure it's reality television, so they do, it's he's always, like, hanging out and here, do 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 beep, 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 beep. And he's got That's tuna coming radar. his way all the, the time. Yeah, He's right. not even work. He's not even going to sweat, right? Yeah, he's a very lucky captain. Yeah. Uh, he baits his hooks read. with edibles. <laughs> <laughs> oh. How about all of those guys? How yeah. much marijuana is consumed by that entire fleet when they get in? Yeah, you know? I, I don't I mean, think that I Dave does, God, though. I Dave is that, the one I think is straight. Yeah, I don't think that. Well, Dave, uh, look, that's a hard life. Okay. Yeah. Uh, anybody that looks like Gizmo uh, from Jimmy's <laughs> Old Town Tavern. Yeah, and Ray uh, Ward didn't even place this year on Wicked yeah, Tuna. Ray, Ray Gizmo Ward. That Dave Marciano could be Ray Gizmo yes. Ward's father. Yes. Am I right? Yes. Absolutely. See, did you just think of that? I thought of that as soon as I saw I the guy. I didn't realize it, but yes. I would go on this cruise. Oh, I would God. go to Gloucester to go on well, this you don't cruise. Call it, if you call it a cruise, they're going to throw. They're going to hold you. They're going to put a banana in your hand, and they're going to throw you overboard if you call it. <laughs> Can a cruise. you see Oscar getting aboard the hard merchandise and saying, "This is great"? Where's the buffet? <laughs> you know what's funny is when Nat Geo sent the uh, bio of this guy, mm-hmm. yeah. uh, and and Rob, I think you're more of a fan than I am, but uh, I did watch the entire uh, teaser copy that they yeah, sent I did to too. Me and, and here's the uh, the bio they said, and I'm going to read it in my best New England Gloucester voice. Excellent. The hard merchandise is the embodiment of blue collar Gloucester, <laughs> from its 30 year old hull to its hard charging captain, who looks more like a Harley Davidson rider than an old salt. <laughs> It's not the fastest boat in the fleet or the prettiest, but the hard merchandise is a legend in the north, thanks to the charismatic captain Dave Marciano. Mm -hmm. And I think so much is said about him when you say, so you survived a shipwreck. He says, yeah, it wasn't much. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, he yeah, seemed. He to was wanna... 18 miles out, and his boat was sinking. He's a straight He's... shooter. Yeah, I guess. Is that a tough guy thing where he doesn't want, or is he embarrassed that they're using that to kind of, where a he like got a hold never his wants boat? To lose well, the, his ship. Yeah, but it's not really his fault if you split a board. It's not like he ran into an iceberg. <laughs> A captain never wants to lose a ship. Listen, let's psychoanalyze, let's psychoanalyze this. Okay. I think the guy might be embarrassed that Nat Geo. Is saying spicing that, that up. Uh, yeah, he has the distinction of surviving a, a shipwreck. When see, he thinks because there was a boat next to them, maybe it wasn't yeah. really a, a shipwrecky kind of thing. Maybe is he's maybe it? he's trying to uh, just dodge blame. You know, or, it's, it's nothing it's to be like, proud it's, it's of. It's like if they ever did down. a show on us. Yeah, and we went through the format flip in two thousand nine. Mm-hmm. Right. We survived a violent, um, a violent coup in the of the workforce. That's like, right. It, it was like a political coup, <laughs> and we were 18 miles out. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Luckily, dangerous. there was a podcast right nearby that was able to save us. <laughs> They He's threw the us a CD in- player. <laughs> He's the son of an insurance man Here's from Beverly, fiber. Massachusetts, though. He didn't come by it honestly. I mean, he well, he came by it. He, How dare been, you? Hey, and you know what? You're the, the son of a guy. Man. You're son of yeah, a guy. Of a, you're a son of an insurance guy, too. That's right. Uh, that's why I always wanted to be a fisherman. 
<laughs> I became and I, and I went I went fishing for psychotics, and that's why I became hmm. a disc jockey. Hey, maybe that's the it. reason he's not so the. <laughs> Maybe the reason the, the shipwreck wasn't a big deal. You want to start? Do you want to yeah, start? I would that like again? to start it again. Take a big deep breath yeah, and just relax. start the whole sentence. It just again. occurred just to me. Oxygen in your Maybe bodies. the reason the shipwreck was not a big deal to him is maybe he was overinsured on his boat. Maybe he made millions of dollars on it. Or oh, there's an outside shot that he might have been wasted, Rob. Could be. Yeah. <laughs> he lost a plank, a full I, plank off a boat. Wouldn't you say the common thread, except for one guy? Yeah. One guy's kind of like. Uh, Looks, he looks like an insurance man, but most of those guys look like... The dot-com guy. The FV.com. FV.com. That's yes. the guy that got the infection, right? Yeah. yeah. He, he got the infection. He went. He's the guy that looks straight. The rest of them look like as soon as the tuna's been hauled off the dock, that it's potty time. And I mean, and it's not potty time by going to a bar. It's no. potty time by sitting in a car and enjoying a big fatty, a giant one, a giant <laughs> marijuana cigarette. That's what I... How about the one boat with the guy with all the dreadlocks and, and brings his Rottweilers on the boat? Yeah, that's another I'm, I'm That's to, another hunt. It's fvtuna.com, I stand corrected. And right. the other boat that's really, they make them, they make them look like a jerk sometimes <laughs> is the right. hot tuna. Yes, the, the hot, hot tuna. tuna. The hot mm. tuna. That's the mm. that's the uh, that's the dreadlocks guy. Yeah, that's yeah, the yeah, real yeah, party. Yeah, yeah. mm. And they are they're all fat. They're all high. And they and they have success. Do you think it has to do? This a, guy's a definite parrot head. They get. Yeah. Are they far enough out in the water that it might be even like outside of legal ramifications, so they can smoke as much pot as they want? I don't know what the, the rules seas. are. I don't either. I don't either. Really, mm. I have no idea what the rules. are. I know you can't call. gamble until the boat leaves the port. That's the well, rule you know I what? know. Since we don't know, I don't know what the rules are, so uh, let's find out. We can find out very quickly. Get me our former employees on the line. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Michael Mara Show. You can listen to the Michael Mara Show at www.michaelmarashow.com. Stay tuned for an outstanding entertainment program. It's the <laughs> Michael Mara Show. Let's get down to business. From the entertainment capital of the world. Maybe you don't have to be so funny. I mean, would it kill you not to be so funny all the time? That's all I'm asking. This woman thinks I'm very funny, and now you're going to be funny, so what am I going to be? I'm going to be a short, bald guy with glasses who suddenly doesn't seem so funny. This is so ridiculous. Can we just go over there? Look, Come I, on. I don't have to be funny. I don't care. You don't? No way. It's completely under my control. No, it's not. You cannot not be funny. Of course I can. Am I being funny now? A little. Oh, this is funny? I'm being funny? Yeah. George, is this funny? It's funny. <laughs> and it wouldn't kill you to not be so funny either. Hi. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> Sorry, it was my aunt's birthday. She makes such a big deal about it. Uh, well, nobody likes to get old, right? <laughs> well, birthdays are merely symbolic of how another year has gone by and how little we've grown. No matter how desperate we are that someday a better self will emerge, each flicker of the candles on the cake, we know it's not to be. But for the rest of our sad, wretched, pathetic lives, <laughs> this is who we are to the bitter end. Inevitably, irrevocably. <laughs> Happy birthday. No such thing. Uh, funny guy, huh? <laughs> it's the Michael Mara Show. Oh, wow. Michael Mara, Rob Spiewak, Oscar Santana. And now, from his office chair, here's Mike. Live from the heart of our nation's capital in the podcast Village Studios, this is the Mike O'Mara Show. The Mike O'Mara Show, a radio show and a podcast with a worldwide network of listeners who get it. And if you're here, you're in the know. In the know. And you do not listen to this show at your peril. <laughs> <laughs> you can listen 24-7 on our new Player Pod app. Hey! Look at that effing tuna. <laughs> we've got, uh, let me tell you what we've got on this brand new app. It's really great. It's run by this guy, Todd Moore, a right-thinking American. Todd who? With, uh, Todd Moore. <laughs> oh, okay. It's, it's got time-coded bookmarks, great media controls, customized settings. Customized settings, Rob. Yes. Uh, and a sleep timer, plus the ability to call the show anytime, anywhere. Download it now on iTunes or at the Google Play Store. 
All items for our weekly mailbag can be sent to Rob with two Bs at MikeOmeraShow.com. And you can call us anytime, but that usually is irrelevant. Yes. And sometimes we don't even do it on Wide Open Wednesday when we've got an A-list to like Pat and Oswald. Yes. The Mike O'Mara Show is on now. We're brought to you by Harry's. Uh, Harry's. Right, enough. Harry's. Um, Harry's is wonderful. You know how many Harry's I have in my drawer up here? Ooh. I have four. Ooh. I have four Harry's handles. With uh, with razor blades everywhere because I love Harry so much. We've got we've got an issue in our house now. Robert's stealing my blades Ooh, because no. now he's shaving a little bit, and we're both on the Harry's program. Luckily, the blades are so affordable. We have to bring him by. You have yeah. to bring him by. He's shaving. Do you know he's grown up? He's taller Whoa, than Mr. Ke- Mike. He's taller than Carrie now. Whoa. Is he really? Yeah, Beanstalk. that's like five ten. Oh, oh my god! No, tell the truth. That's a lot six, of razor. Eight. <laughs> uh, anyway, I do. <laughs> uh, never had a better shave than when I uh, got the, to know Harry's, and it's one of my favorite clients that we have on the Mike O'Mara show. Harry's knows that switching razors is not an easy decision. It is as soon as you try a Harry's yes. uh, razor because you'll know. Uh, they created a trial offer. Claim yours by going to harrys.com slash TMOS. Harry's founders were fed up with overpaying for expensive razors with unnecessary features. Uh, that's why they bought the factory that's been making some of the highest quality blades in the world for over 95 years, and it's kind of fun watching everybody scramble to try to keep up with Harry's. Yes. This is it. By selling directly to you over the internet, Harry's can offer their blades at $2 per blade compared to $4 or more for the leading brand. Plus, if you don't love your shave, let Harry's know within 30 days, and they'll give you a full refund. Here's the special offer. The $13 value trial set. That comes with everything you need for a close, comfortable shave. That'll get you started. A weighted ergonomic handle, five-blade razor with lubricating strip and trimmer blade, rich lathering shave gel, and a travel blade cover. Once you get to know this company, you'll be like me. I have many, many different products from Harry's. Not just the razor, not just the shave gel. I've got the face wash. Yes. I love Harry's. Our listeners can Redeem their trial set at harrys.com slash TMOS. Make sure you go to harrys.com slash TMOS to redeem your offer and let them know that I sent you to help support the show. Start saving while you're shaving. Thank you very much, Harry. May Welcome I be the to- first to say it? What? Happy birthday. Not my birthday. My but it's going to be tomorrow. tomorrow. It's going to be tomorrow. Well, it's leaving. coming up. I'm leaving today. He's I'm leaving. The- I know. He's leaving on leaving. a jet plane. I'm going to Vermont for my birthday weekend, and uh, I'm going to uh, stay at a uh, lovely, ice cream lovely... Uh, yes, well, he's going- staying at the bed and breakfast that is an ice cream factory. Yes, I'm staying at an ice cream. <laughs> That's the high point of the trip for me because I'm a fat tub of goo, uh, and I've been eating <laughs> beans and lettuce and... Nuts for the last three days, getting ready, and then it'll be all gained back this weekend. <laughs> fat man, fat man, fat man. Will you ask a uh, question to the Ben and Jerry's tour guide or whoever it is that's showing you around? Because there's, I do if, have. A, if, if I go, I really have to point out that I am going to visit our friends, the Colburns. Yes, and we are guests, and I am not going to drive the agenda. I have uh, communicated with our good friend, Mr. Marcus Serta, who also lives in that area, and said, Boo. If, Boo. If, Stop it, stop it. Behave yourself. Stop it. Have you ever gone on to a birthday stop. trip? Marcus has been wonderful. Marcus and I will have a date uh, later in the if summer. If you heard the latest uh, of what Marcus has been saying about the show, I think you'd change your mind. Okay, lay it on me. I, give it to See, me. See, the problem with Marcus is he's a blabber. Blabber mouth. He wasn't okay. even on Americast this week, so we traded up. We got Jim Amato, which was nice. Yes. Yeah, that's right. That's right. But what has Marcus been saying? He said he's a, something he's a along the lines that he he blamed uh, more broadcasting and us, quite frankly, yes, for the demise of the Tony Perkins show. He emphatically mm. blamed us. Yeah, did he really? He did, mm-hmm. and that is not a lie. That is that's not cool. That's yeah. not we, 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 yeah. we did nothing but support I'm that show. I'm telling you, the man cannot be trusted. I really? agree. Yes. I do you want me to pull out of my uh, no, wonderful little you gotta, look, you trip gotta, to Boston you gotta, where he gets you gotta me free Red Sox tickets? You got to be close to and he gets you free tickets. Yeah. Why did he give us a hard time about that? I don't know and he didn't sound like he was drinking. I listened to it twice. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yes. Really? Yeah. All right. All right. Hold on. Let get Marcus on the phone. Oh, get Marcus oh, on the phone. oh yeah. Oh boy. I like, uh, I like so airing my point, dirty laundry on the air. My point was we are going to be house guests with our friends. Oh. It's their agenda. Yeah. If we make it to the Ben and Jerry's thing, that would be fun. They brought it up, and I got excited about it, but there is no prerequisite for me. You know me. what? Then take I it off the table. To, no, don't I, go. I'm, no, I'm, you see, I'm, here's the deal. They are I'm such going, great shut hosts. Up, Oscar. They are such great hosts. Bastard. They're going to know that it's important to you, and they're right. going to make it happen. 
And I know that you're not going to drive the agenda and be pushy about it, but they're going to make it happen because they're wonderful people. Fine. But what I was going to say was I reached out to Marcus, who Mm -hmm. was up there and apparently making noise about the fact that I hadn't reached out. Well, it's not my agenda. I said, if we're somewhere where I say, hey, if there happens to be an ice cream factory, that's cool. No, I said, like, if we're having a beer somewhere or we're out and about, but we've got the little guy. And and so I'd reach out and say hi. But I don't like them uh, saying... So you take it up with him, Oscar, because I, I don't know Oh, you know want exactly. me to take care of this? <clears throat> well, no, I don't want you to take care of it. I'll talk to him as well. Oh, okay. You know, if he's not busy. I can't wait to speak to him. Know. He's you know, fun. He's, a, he's always in like a buy-sell uh, atmosphere, like a, like a boiler room. <laughs> That's <laughs> him, all right. <laughs> Slinging pies. To your yacht or to your mansion. Right. Buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, right. sell. If anybody's listening live, Hi, this and they is know Marcus about... from MC Media. All right. No, I don't. Leave MC. I don't, no, no, I don't want to leave a message. All right. I don't want to MC that. your way uh, to a little more respect. Yeah. <laughs> well, what did he say though specifically? I mean, uh, the, uh, Tony. Uh, Tony's gotten a if radio. I, if, if, we, if, we predicted Tony if, wouldn't do the show after pull, he got his radio. If, I, if you heard what I heard, and I, I think who else was around? I, we, we both oh, together. Mike, I was hot. Yeah. And you know, really? it takes a lot for me to be hot about stuff. Because I'm dead really? inside. Yes. Oh, that's not uh, yeah. Cool. He he, and it's like it's so weird because I feel like he's showing off. Oh, there's he, a lot of that. It's a big man on camera. Do you remember when he was making fun of me at the last Red Sox game and he realized yes. he had an audience and he just yes. he grabs onto that and he loves it. Yeah. Because he likes. I guess maybe people don't listen to him in his real life very much, and that makes him excited wow, when people listen to him. Yeah. But what he's his tone Have you was heard essentially. What we heard. You it's might a, cancel shows and friendships. It was essentially really? yeah. the Tony Perkins show would still be on the air if we had supported it more. Yeah. That was essentially the the uh, That's crux the gist of his of what, gist, But yeah. he went on for like a three minute diatribe mm-hmm. about that mm-hmm. and then uh I, this might have been on a rob and joe episode and rob and joe both were like well like pump the brakes man yeah like you don't know anything about anything we don't know all the details of what's so going rob on and background. joe were, were talking about marcus or had marcus uh, on marcus brought up the tony well they are all talking about the tony perkins show right yes and not in a bad way and then marcus laid into this whole this whole, like, I can't believe that more broadcasting failed uh, the Tony Perkins show. And then, and wow. I, I, it's not, it is not my place to air anybody's business or laundry. But, Mike, you hit the nail on the head when you said, to, uh, Tony Perkins is a friend of the show. He will always be a friend of the show. He got a new radio gig. Yes. Tony and, wanted the Tony Perkins show because yes. Tony was doing television and always wanted to have a radio show. An when outlet. Tony reunited with Donnie Simpson, his longtime yes. friend and his former co-worker, Tony had the radio thing taken care of. He had an of. outlet. Yes. The show that Marcus talks about uh, was promoted regularly on this. We put him in our feed. We put no one in our feed. Right. We put we put him in our feed, and uh, <clears throat> and they they did it for a long time. Yeah. The show it was not due to listener support, and I hate to be cruel. But if it had been due to listener support, the show would have gone off in the first year. True we story. kept that show True on. True story. We kept that show on. We all we supported it. Support we that all show. went on the show. the show. We ran the promos. We oh did everything. The, the show the would have been. So he's indicated, Marcus, the show did not go off because people did not support it. The show went off because Tony chose to go uh, to, to stop doing the show. Yeah. Tony and I had a wonderful conversation about that. By the way, to pull back the curtain, the Tony Perkins show was uh, a show that we would have kept on as long as Tony Perkins wanted Forever. to do the show. Yeah. Ever. And the 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 uh, by the way, we have thousands of listeners that could have made the choice <clears throat> to listen to that show. We made that show uh the awareness of yes. that show a priority for us in the early days. Mm-hmm. We also continued to promote it on a daily basis, yep. perhaps a weekly basis towards the end, I'm not sure. But we promoted that show. The show was featured. We had <coughs> Tony on the Pr- show proud, regularly. And, and look, look, we we I was, guessed it on the show, Mike. Yeah, again, we all did. The long text I had written out to Marcus Serta that I was going to send him to tell him to kick rocks, I pulled back from mm-hmm. because I didn't want. We don't have to justify what we do for people because that's what we do for people. The most important, Marcus, people that need if to know you're that. listening live right now or you're doing one of your voice stream things, I'd like to get you on the show. If you're out there, uh, you know. You, you have the name of, of my show, uh, Omericast, and I will not keep the name of that. I thought that was a show to commiserate with fans. And if you're on there, you know, pulling a fan club bullshit move oh, yeah. Yeah. to do that, Tell that's, not, that's not acceptable. We'll take a ruler to and your And I'll pee-pee. take the Red Sox. And by the way, the Red Sox <laughs> game is off the 
table. Whoa! Oh, boy. Damn. Thank you kindly. Uh, I don't care. You mess with a bull, I you thought, get the horns. Exactly. No, screw right? that. Am I, I right? Mean, what, I mean, honest right. to God. I talk, yeah, We have the conversations here, and it's fine to, to, to talk about the show and maybe something that was said on my show that you don't like. But when you get into stuff you don't know about and you're talking about that. Theorizing minutia. Yeah. With, with, by the way, with some level of credibility that you have because you're associated with us, that's not fair, man. That's the way I that's felt not like. Fair. And especially if you're, if you're doing that and you're that upset about it. Uh, then kick you know, rocks. If you, if you were upset about it, promote it more on your own show. Tell your story and, and, walking. But the, but the, to get it wrong like that and to be a victim of that when the fact was that we... He doesn't have, have the whole story. We, he just does We would have no. kept Tony Perkins yeah. on as long as we had. It had nothing to do with advertising, right? for God's sake. It had nothing to do with numbers of downloads. It had everything to do with that was a friend of mine from the old days, he still is, that enjoyed doing a show. And Gary Stein was a guy that uh, liked doing the show. Mm-hmm. And Gary sent me a nice note. And we had a lovely exchange. There was no... You know, it, it wasn't it went off the air because this is not NBC no, where a pilot right. failed. We, we didn't this is, it had nothing them. to we do gave with that. Three years of studio free studio time, yes. free support, free bandwidth, free everything. Right. So. Marcus, now that you've heard all of this, call him again. I want to leave him a message is a good time to remind <clears> still <throat> the number, Matt. Mm-hmm. OK, good. And everybody out there that orbits this world, that Mike is the hot chick. He yes. is the sun. And you can get burned by the sun. That's what I. That's what I play when you say I'm the. <laughs> I don't like that. Anyway, uh, let me. This. This is not cool. This is not fun. This is not good. This is a. But he has. Hasn't he danced around this yeah. passive aggressive love hate? Thing, Does he know, like for, us? For Does yeah, he I, hate us? Does I think he, he have sex with us. I think he's driven by oh, negativity yeah, and conflict, like many yeah. of our fans are. Who thought? Like rolling into the summer. Is this the only number we have for him, by the way? Yes, his cell number. Yeah. Hi, this is Marcus. Oh, oh there he is. Marcus, Marcus, I'm, uh, the boys are mad at you, and I didn't hear the show, but they are <clears throat> mad at you about what you said about Tony Perkins. Why are you mad at me about what I said about Tony Perkins? I'm not. Hold on, Marcus. You didn't listen because you immediately want it to be, why am I mad at you? No, no, I'm no, no, repeating no, no, no. what I was Oscar said. directing it said. to them, Mike. Okay. No, I was all right, directing so, it to them. So go what did all right? Go oh, ahead, guys, because I, I have to say I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get into this yep. until I'm more informed. You know, you, you okay? need in, you need information. Yes, uh, Marcus. Uh, on I think it might have been a couple of weeks ago, Rob and Joe. Yeah. Uh, when you discussed the Tony Perkins show near the tail end of the program, uh, you went what I what I rather think on an aggressive uh, rant about how more broadcasting failed that show. Explain that to Mike, please. I didn't say that more broadcasting was the failure of that particular show. I think that that show is a very good show. It was very, very good for the network. And I think that, you know, all of us should have done more to keep that show rolling. It wouldn't have mattered. No, it wouldn't I, have mattered. Matt Marcus, hold on. Stop, stop right there. I, I wish stop we had because, the tape okay. to play you because Mar- Marcus, that's not the, what you said. You blame more broadcasting. Yes, we should have done more to well, save think, that show. I, I think you're you're taking you're taking one snippet and and you're blowing it into the whole discussion. It's not that if you but listen to what your, I said on America, it's your it's your words it, though. Your it, words on one show. I'm not going to listen to ten shows to figure out uh, to decode what you're trying to say, man. You said it on one show, and I listened to it multiple times. I was like, man, this guy's coming out of left field with this. What does he, he think he knows that we don't know? Really strange for a guy who's supposed to be supporting uh, the show and has a show on our network. Kind of weird. Yeah, very weird. Well, I'm supporting all the shows on, on the network. And, you know, of course I support the Mike O'Mara show and everything that Moore does. But again, I, I you know, I, I also come from the place of being a fan. I'm talking to Rob and Joe about on that particular show about the Tony Perkins show and, you know, what happened, this and that. And, you know, we're not the angle for. The Rob and Joe show is not about the fans. It's not about other other pieces of this puzzle. It's directly about how they play the Tony Perkins show plays as part of more broadcasting, just like Rob and Joe show. So that was my angle in that particular discussion. So well, I mean, the, you took the, it the that bottom I put line all is the blame uh, on your shoulders. Oh wait, wait, no, 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 no! Don't pull that BS. Sorry, I took it that way. 
anybody in America that listens to that clip, and we'll effing pull it, man, and we'll play it for the world, and then we can all think, hey, maybe Oscar's crazy that he took it that way. It's plain and simple. I listened to it enough times. You're being a complete dick. You're acting like a know-it-all when you don't know all the facts. And you're being completely I, I disrespectful. Admit, I didn't you're being say completely that I did. you're being completely disrespectful to our team here, yes. to Mike, our brand, and you and you and it really took me uh it took me by surprise because that's not the guy I thought you were. Um, okay. I don't, I don't know what else I could say cuz you're going to you're going to argue that that I'm tell that I'm giving you something completely different. Look, I I would defend any one of the shows on this network. Well, no, no, no. Defend and, yourself. And I would promote any one of these De- shows. Defend so yourself. For me personally, look, here's here's the here's the whole truth. The truth is, is that I don't have all the facts about what happened behind the scenes. I have limited information. I think I even acknowledge that even on the Robin Joe show. But regardless, you know, and I said it on my own show, I think that we the listeners could have done more. I think maybe maybe I should have done more. Who knows? Let me let I me all right, let's stop. All right, let, let, let me more let, could have potentially done more. No. Uh, so. First of all, first of all, there is let me let me give you all the facts. And by the way, since we've got you here, we'll run over this break a little bit, Rob. OK. And Marcus, if you've got a moment, I will I will clear everything and I will answer any question you have about the Tony Perkins show. OK, but let me give you some facts to start with uh, at the very beginning we uh, were delighted, and I think we sought out Tony Perkins to yes. do the show. I believe that what we yeah, did we, was we, we actually for wanted Tony, uh, Tony to do the show. We actually uh, put his picture up. We uh, The, the uh, Cake and Cookies show and the Tony Perkins show, we were excited to make the debut, and we just poured our energy into it, and we gave it a shot, much like we're doing with political persuasions right now, uh, but uh, just like political persuasions, it's a it's a monetary situation where if you can't get uh, downloads, you can't get advertisers, and that's what we try to do. And it takes time, and you have to give it a certain amount of time. At a certain point, that time was out. It didn't work, and and they were trying, and we were trying, but the reality we kept was rolling that, with it. Kept yeah. that, that we, you know we paid you know, for I, train tickets, we paid for everything. Right. Yes, we did not. We they did not it. have the downloads. And for years, that show remained on the network without having the downloads. And there is nothing you can do short of a massive advertising budget that I would love to have to triple my downloads on this show. And this and is they a did show their that beats people's well. families. They, they and, hired, and they did they, they they hired did their PR part agencies, well. everything. But what, this, but what this came down to, and they came to us early on and said, hey, man, it's not happening. You know, we need we need more. What can we do? What can we do? And when they came to us and said that, we said, let's try this, let's try this. And it, and it went on and on. What never changed through all of that was that Tony and Gary loved doing the show. And they had, uh, they had a blast doing it. And we, you know, my policy was and would have been today, if Tony had chosen to stay with the show, mm-hmm. would have been to keep the show on for as long as Tony wanted to do it. Tony gets a radio gig, and I said that day when I found out that he was getting a radio gig, well, that's it for the Tony Perkins show because I assumed that would automatically make the show go away. There are already rumors uh, and, that he was you know, sh- closing up shop internally. Sure. Well, he, yeah. uh, that, uh, he talked to if, us about if we, it. If we want full disclosure, Tony came to me months before that, even before Donnie Simpson, and said he was going to give it a, a little longer, but he didn't know how long he could stay with it. Mm-hmm. That is the truth. That is the way. As far as doing more... Uh, you know, outside of putting the show on the network, outside of running a regular promo for the show, outside of getting Tony to come in and sit in with us, outside of giving him space on our website as much as we give every other show, I don't know what more could have been done when my prime directive is to get listeners for the Mike O'Mara show, but I love having these shows. None of these shows... None of these shows put any uh, revenue into our pocket mm-hmm. as the core of people that actually do this for a living. Mm-hmm. So that's I'll answer any questions you have, but that's uh, that, those are all the the facts as I know them. And I don't know what you said, uh, but but that's you know that's kind of the the truth of the matter where it where it comes from right now. And I appreciate that insight. Thank you very much. I mean, again, I'm coming oh, at want. it from an outsider point of view, and I totally admit that, and, and I openly admitted that 
even in those two conversations. Okay, but you it's understand, you understand again, w- it, within when, two conversations. When it, when it was all said, I, I as a fan of, of, you know, these shows and yours, was just coming off the hurt of finding out that one of my favorite shows is going away. But don't okay, you understand? I, totally, I, no, I hold on. Asked, I get that. I get that. I, now that before we jump on him, I totally understand that. I get he that, too. He loved the show, and that's cool. And you're bummed that a show. It's just like me being bummed that Barry Trotz uh, left the Washington Capitals. I'm not informed with all of the information, but now I'm giving him all the information to tell him where, where it was coming from. There's nothing more that, that I can see. If we had been able to do something that we thought could generate oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. more, uh, more, you know, uh, you know, it's just, but also. What if we gave to, Tony a podcast with Barry Trotz? <laughs> that would be fun. I'd like that. That would be a lot of fun. That but but I think one thing, Islanders. one thing I think to record it. I think Marcus is we understand your disappointment and your sadness yeah. with yeah. the departure of the show. The show had a lot of fans, myself included. But You're an when adult. you when you are the host of a show called Americast and a representative of our brand, it's irresponsible to say the very least and unprofessional again to go on and say that at any part it was the fault of our network. Because that makes us look bad, and we, in no, fact, but, but it's it not also true. Makes us, and it makes us out to be the people that made the decision. Yeah, yeah and it's not like that we case. We shuttered the doors. That so, is not. That was the decision. Was uh, a person who is not an employee, right. But a a cohort exactly. came to me and said he didn't want to do the show anymore, and I said, okay, I completely understand. We had a nice conversation about it. Does that make sense? Understood. And, I, yeah, and, and so, again, I made those particular comments on the Robin Joe show the very next Americast. I got into it, and it was more thoughtful. And again, one of the things that came out of it that I said personally is that, okay, what can we do as fans? What can we do to to ensure that our shows are doing more and, and continuing on? So one of the things that Jim and I talked about on the show was specifically starting to hashtag and using social media to say, look, I am listening and laughing to right now the Mike O'Mara show. I am listening and laughing to political persuasions and start using our power as listeners through the social media. Totally to agree. With that. yes. That's fine. I, Let's totally, I, I, shows I, on. I, I totally so agree I'm with that. Sorry. I, again, Be best. I, I was, it was very reactionary on the Robin Joe show. I think I did a much better job of dealing with it on Omericast. So again, my apologies. And I, I totally understand where you're coming from. My apologies for, the way that came off on the Robin Cho show, I again, I hope that I had made it good with the discussion that I had on Americast that week. Let me let me inter- that, interrupt you know, with one story. one thing too. Okay, when you talk about the more network, <laughs> it is it is like uh, when you give a person in a radio station. You've been around radio stations, Marcus, so you know what I'm talking about. You know when you want to get somebody to do more work, but you don't want to pay them, and you give them a fancier title? Yes. That's exactly what the More Network yeah. is. The, the, the More Network, for me, is something that I put a lot of shows on our website, and uh, Mike O'Mara Radio Entertainment, with mm-hmm. the hope that the, some of these shows would uh, become a cash cow. None of them has. No. And, and so the More Network is a network in name only. I, I, I hate to tell you that, but that's the truth. I, if the More Network, if every show on the More Network were to go kaboom uh, tomorrow, it would damage our brand in that there are probably some people that like our show and other shows. But other than that, it would not affect the Mike O'Mara show one yeah. tiny bit. And from bit. an operational and, and, standpoint, we, it, God bless other programs, but they gain more than, than we do from them. And, and, the, and I really, the sheer really downloads would love, dictate that, right? Yes. I, I would love these shows to do well. I would love these shows to do better, but the priority has to be, you know, if when we check our numbers and when we're trying to get our uh, revenues up and we're trying to get our shows sold out and we're trying, we are scrapping every day to keep the forward momentum, which thank you, Jesus, we still manage to have after all these years. But that's the that's the priority, and it's uh, it's tough. And, I, and in the, the real world, and I, look, let me just, I'm sorry to cut you, cut you off, Mike. I want to, this should be said. That um, Tony at one point had come to us because he was being courted by another a major net podcast yes. network, yes. right? Right. And I, I said, oh, and I, right. I yeah, and I said to Tony, I said, look, man, I said there are a couple ways you could look at this. 
Um, and I know from my perspective and being on the business side and seeing how these big networks are run, I said, you will always have a home here. I've talked to Michael Mayer about this yep. and Rob and the entire yeah. team. I was like, you will never be asked to go. Uh, numbers be damned. You can grind this out as, as long as you want, as long as you uh, enjoy creating content and, ha and have the bandwidth to do so. If you go to another network, which we, we said you can go. Absolutely. Do your thing if you think that's best for the show. You will be asked to leave if you do not perform within a certain amount of time. That's real business. Yeah. That's how a real business is run. Yes. If you don't have X amount of downloads, not worth our time. I've seen it happen to a, a handful of other shows, and you know what happens? They backtrack, and sometimes they completely shudder after that big network leaves them. So we have a little family here, and the key word is family. And that family backs each other up and says, you got a carte blanche run for as long as you want. All we ask is you don't talk S about us little respect understood my apologies again so uh, i guess is this the, i mean we're i guess we're still going to the red sox game i would hope so i've got <laughs> well, the no, tickets I, i'm ready to go if i heard it oscar <laughs> says i would Hold be up. we've so, got, we've so got angry. it we've got it pulled up yeah i need the uh wire right. oh, okay oh, no oh no uh, marcus is this gonna make me mad i i i'm sure it will and i apologize <laughs> oh, oh, ahead no. of time. All right. Okay, well, this so. is the, but you know what? I, I'll tell you this. Mm -hmm. I'm. We're still going to do the Red Sox thing. I'm not going to let this uh, get to me. I'm saying that before <laughs> Mike, I hear it. Namaste. Okay. Namaste. Namaste. Okay. With that right. being said, can can I just say that I'm already running late for a meeting? So you go ahead. I need to go. No, you go ahead. You get. You were nice to come on. Ciao, and ciao. That's fine. Mm -hmm. And uh, and and everything. Everything is. You going hang to be up, fine. Marcus. All right. Thank you, Marcus. All right, fellas. Have fun. Goodbye. Bye -bye. All right. Bye. Bless. Bye bye. All right. <laughs> Here we go. All right. Let's listen. I'm oh, gonna no, no, hold it hold before we play. It. We got to take a break. Okay. We got to do right, a right. commercial. Okay. We'll come back Mike, uh, and we will listen nice to tease. the uh, Marcus tape. All right. Thank you. I have Ooh, real teeth. Your front, front, your front's holding. Yeah, that's good. Okay. All right. Uh, we'll take a short break. We'll come back and I'll get pissed right here on the mic. <laughs> <laughs> Hi everybody. This is Man Barry reminding you. Welcome back to the Mike O'Mara Show, everybody. Brought to you by Cornerstone First Financial. Here's a fact from Cornerstone First Financial. Home values are at the highest levels in 14 years, which means there are trillions of dollars in equity out there. It's a perfect time to use your home as a virtual ATM for debt consolidation, a divorce buyout. I'm still laughing about patting yesterday. And home improvements or anything else, especially since the tax deductibility implications on a HELOC have changed this year. If you're buying a home, Cornerstone First Financial is a direct lender with their own money and can set their own rates and beat all others. You can get pre-approved before you work with an agent so you know what you qualify for, just like so many TMOS listeners have done before you. I promise you, Cornerstone First Financial will give you sound advice. Click their banner on our website or call Cornerstone First Financial 202-625-1221. Mention TMOS and receive a free appraisal at closing. Personal attention from application to closing. Licensed in Maryland, D.C., Virginia, Florida, Georgia, and Colorado. Don't wait. Now is the time to call Cornerstone First Financial. Welcome back to the show. Oh, uh, hey, fleet of foot pony. Way to get that uh, clip nice up. Nice work. Let's, uh, mm -hmm. So is this Marcus on uh, Robin Joe? On Robin Joe's show. And this is right. after uh, Robin Joe brought up what happened to Tony Perkins' show. And they're saying, oh, it's a shame that it's gone. And this is Marcus. This okay. is a show that had Ringo Starr on twice. Who's yeah. that? <laughs> and they had big name gets, and they're not pulling numbers, or they're not getting the advertisers, or they're not getting the support from behind the scenes. I I think there's got to be some questions going on around more as to why the f we just lost one of the best shows in the network. That's is it. that it? That's it. Yep. All right, I'm not mad. <laughs> it's, it's it's what Oscar said. So yeah. I mean, I'm, I yeah. was diffused. Yeah. I, I understand yeah. what, the, and I understand he was upset because he liked the show, yeah. and uh, and I liked the show, and I liked Tony, yeah. and I like Gary, and and but by the way, Gary Stein, one of the sweetest guys uh, to communicate with, and I've never met him. Uh, Gary and I never met each other personally. There, there was uh, more and, to that clip. <laughs> that was oh, no. that was pretty much all the relevant oh, stuff to what we were talking about. Is Marcus sort of paying you, Pony? <laughs> <laughs> no. Are you sure? I wish. Yeah. Oscar, are you disappointed that I didn't get it more for real? <laughs> there was like, there was like um, two minutes worth. Yeah, he he. I, That's do, I all think, there was. I think he <laughs> understands where we're coming from, and I think uh, I understand where he's going. He liked his show. 
the, the, look, I would say to everybody when it comes to cake and cookies, Ringo when it comes Starr to Robin and didn't Joe, move the meter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was very popular. He was in a European rock band called the Beatles, <laughs> and a lot of people enjoy his work. I would urge Not on everybody. A <laughs> Everybody, everybody that listens to this show, go and listen uh, to all the shows yes. on the network. Yeah. Is I, am I going to lose my voice for my <laughs> birthday weekend? Oh, my God. Oh, no. Uh, but, all he wants anyway. for his birthday miracle <clears throat> is to have his voice back. Like that episode of The I Brady do. Bunch. No, no, when uh, Carol got her weird. voice back for Christmas. So uh, it, it's just, uh, it's fine. Everything's okay. You got, I'll be okay. <laughs> but, uh, but now, you know, he won't be getting a text from me this weekend. Thank you very much. Yeah, well, ice just, him out uh, for a little bit, Mike. Well, I have to. I yeah. have to make a point. Yeah. I have to I have to make a point there. Sometimes your that... back burner chick can get out of line as well. <laughs> hmm. That's right. Haven't we, uh, as Rob knows, and Rob's been the victim, even when uh, Marcus made me laugh about Rob, mm. uh, you know, and uh, and he's, he, it was, he was quite passionate about you. Uh, so, I mean, there have been... It's a weird relationship. Well, it's I know a, this. But is, not, is it not a relationship we have had with fans all the time. throughout the years? And what we must remember is, is even strange. though... I've never he, been able to figure it out. Even though Marcus may have misspoke, he's really a wonderful guy. <laughs> Rob. <laughs> who, would, who, who would have thought <laughs> that there was a day where... <laughs> or a week that we have had three listeners. Right. Yeah. Three listeners in our lives that have been known to us and have loved us. Right. And the one guy that's come out on top, because I had a long conversation with SDM yesterday, three of them, in fact, right? Well, lucky you. And he was just a, a breath of fresh air. So kind, not misstepping, hand in hand of what's going on in Vegas. Right. And then- Marcus Serta, who's been pretty much just kind of like a uh, play ball type of guy. Hey, I'll, you know, whatever. Have you ever played ball? <laughs> right. <laughs> he becomes this this like uh, barnacle that's rubbing us the wrong way, right? That we can't shake. Yeah. And then you got- He's Dark, a pebble in our shoe. You got Dirk Vastrick stepping on his you-know-what, uh, t- telling people that he's going to uh, make something happen on Saturday night when we've right. got we've got our own plans on Saturday night. Right. We By do. the way, save yes. the date. And yes, as save we, the date, as, as we sit here, I'm like, man, six months changes everything. SDM is the, at the top of the charts, and you've got Dirk Vastrick, and you've got Marcus Serta plummeting in the charts. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it's just it, you know, it's a fine line that is uh, that we walk. Dirk, don't touch and, me. Uh, and uh, <laughs> you know, Dirk, Dirk sent me a very nice uh, birthday gift, and I thank you for oh. that, Dirk. Uh, and and but uh, you know, we are planning something for Saturday yeah. night, so be aware yeah. of that. Was the uh, gift the, he sent? Was it a dead rabbit? It was a no <laughs> a dead <laughs> rabbit, <laughs> like Gangs of New York. Yeah, the Dead Rabbit Society. <laughs> So we have to take another break. We will come back. Uh, I got a facial. Oh, yeah, you did. Oh, yeah. I got a facial. My, my <laughs> wife gave it to me. Oh, that's nasty. Oh, uh, oh it's Carol King. <laughs> For those of you that enjoy that type of thing. We'll take a break and we'll come back with more fun and more thrills on the Mike O'Mara. I feel my heart start to tremble. Shalomi, my homies. Intern Emily here. If you haven't heard, I'm shipping off to Israel for the next month. I'll be climbing mountains, trekking through the desert, and even floating in the Dead Sea. But whatever will I do with my downtime? Luckily, TMOS is now available on Spotify. It's easier than ever to listen wherever and whenever you want. And the best part? It's free! So check out The Mike O'Mara Show on Spotify. Tov, yalla, bye. Welcome back to The Mike O'Mara Show, brought to you by Legacy Box. Isn't it time to digitize your lifetime of memories? You can do it! You can do it! All you need is Legacy Box. You just send in your Legacy Box filled with the uh, old home movies and pictures, and they'll do the rest, digitizing your moments onto a thumb drive, the cloud, or DVDs. As Rob mentioned the other day, they let you know what's happening every single step, every step. of the way, which is wonderful. We've all used Legacy Box, and the results were amazing. amazing. All the work is done by hand right here in the U.S. of A. There has never been a better time to digitally preserve your old home movies, film reels, your photos. They let you know what they're doing, and they get them back to you in perfect condition, and then you've got them for life. Visit LegacyBox.com today to get started. For a limited time, our listeners can get a huge exclusive discount. Go to LegacyBox.com slash TMOS to get 40% off your first order. With this exclusive deal, Legacy Box starts at just $45 or save up to $200 on the largest Legacy Box kit. 
Go to LegacyBox.com slash TMOS and save 40% today. Start with just a few tapes or digitize your entire collection. Visit LegacyBox.com slash TMOS and make sure to enter the code TMOS to save 40% on your Legacy Box today. Get started preserving your past, and we thank you. Good stuff, Legacy Box. Uh, so is it? Is it? are we done? Have we buttoned it all up? I didn't I know believe we were going to so. have a controversy Ooh. today. Always like uh, exposing a rat on the show. Well, it's, uh, it's frustrating, <laughs> and... Uh, it's just, uh, when it comes to the fans of this show, the people that are super over the top uh, get so into it. Very passionate. Sometimes, yeah. sometimes it actually clashes with the people that are involved in running the business of the show itself. Feel the same and way that, about uh, some adult sites, Mon, when their uh, servers are down. Yes. Mm, yeah. <laughs> or when they double and you get up on online the same with pick. All, spewing that hatred. Oh, what I, I, you say? I tweet them right away. I'm like, what are you doing? Yeah, you see, yeah. Oscar has a passion. He has a passion. Mm-hmm. And uh, passionate people have passionate actions. Paying yeah, for this <laughs> site, you better you better give me my fifty cents back. Yeah, for I'd like a, I'd like something you know retrofitted to yes. my bill. I need forty eight cents back, please. Well, I'm glad everything is fine and everything's fine with Marcus, and he understands. We're fine. Yes. Fine. I, you know, I was disappointed. We probably didn't spend enough time Sorry talking about the demise way, of the Tony Perkins show, but uh, we did now, and uh, you know, it's on. Dare, we had the uh, air dirty laundry. Uh, he is still a friend. He will be a friend. Always. And by the way. If he ever wants to come back and do another type of podcast, oh, he, he, one of the yeah. things I said to him is that, that we left it with that, where he could come back and you do it. You and Andy, but he, you. Yeah, he wanted he to do being... a, a podcast about hip-hop music, I understand, so we're well, exploring that's, that. That's wonderful. <laughs> now, you're being you're being snarky now. <laughs> Just a little. The, 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 he can come back whenever he wants, yeah. but Marcus, if I was doing yeah. television like he's doing, yeah. and I was doing a full-time radio show, I wouldn't have room to do a third. I, I just don't. I just don't think I would. But some people can. Some people don't. Tony didn't want to continue doing it. Uh, I wish the show had been uh, more quality had more of listeners. life. Always yeah, that's wished. true. That's a yeah. good point, Oscar. Uh, by the way, uh, just another little thing here is that uh, when you're online, I, I love it when this lady is coming up to Maine to vacation and she took a picture of the Walmart that I shop at. Yes, and said she couldn't see me, and then this guy uh, John Crandall was like getting a little too into it, saying, you know. I, I, you know, you might want to check the Ellsworth location. It's just okay. Calm down, please. And then they start. So, Carla, I have to apologize to our listeners. There's a thread about people trying to find out where I am, which is great. If you're doing what we do, you want people to be that enthusiastic, but it is a little creepy. And then Carla gets on and says, I think that you must have just missed us. That's our car in the parking lot. And she showed oh, me no. that. Oh, no. Don't screw with the listeners mm-hmm. like that, please. Maybe it would be easier to find you, Mike, if you wore a big red and white striped sweater like Where's Waldo? Well, I'm and, there every day, for Christ's sake. Of course. It seems like we live there. I might as well have a cot there, you know? What do we need? I need a cooler to go to the Culver's. Let's go to... Here we go again. <laughs> go into the Walmart again. Do you have a favorite greeter? Uh, we have a least favorite greeter. Ah, really? What's the problem we, with this one? We refer to her before. We call her the hawk. Oh, yes, you've mentioned the hawk. Yeah, she's the lady that's. Uh, <laughs> she's the lady that caught us uh, getting the, uh, the, the... Thought we stole water. Yes. <laughs> A person of interest. Me. A little difficult. That was uh, uh, a little pay scary. from that water. <laughs> Come back in here. I'm the hawk. I'll <laughs> smile at you, but I'm trying to screw you. Uh, <laughs> by the way, uh, I got a facial this week. Uh, yeah, for Mrs. you O'Mara. did. Uh, yeah. I don't know what she put on my f- face, <laughs> but uh, it was uh, goo that exfoliates. And she said, now, this is going to go on thick. And then it's going to get very, very thin, and you're going to feel it working. And uh, and I just sat like there. Like a mentholated and, sort of thing? Does it well, feel Carla, like that? Why would Carla, you? Is she let me just tell bored? you what Carla's all about. Is she no, no, she's not bored, but she is. Uh, <laughs> Mrs. O'Mara will probably, uh, in the next uh, you know year or so, be thinking <gasps> about. Behind yes. you. <laughs> Come over here. Come over here. Like a, you're thinking a about GD maybe Magic getting into show. the workforce again, and you're thinking about doing that uh, that type of work. You like that. You like cosmetology yeah. and that type of thing. And so you gave me a facial. How was I as a patient? He was great. He was Can wonderful. you say what you said to me yeah. uh, during the entire facial, which I really like? It has the pressure. Oh, <laughs> nice. Well done. <laughs> We're going to Vermont. Look at that hottie I get to go to Vermont with. I'm so excited. Aww. I'm a fat man. Hi. Yes. Uh, anyway, but Mike, uh, you may so. be fat, but you're positively glowing. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. So, oh, the, it was when no black. That's heads. what I like. Every like two minutes or so, she'd say, "How's the? Pre- Why do you put your hands up?" In this room? Mm. Put your hands in the hair like you what, just what, don't what care. Happened? What? I, I can't find our our uh, what our bag. Our, our bag. suitcase. Yeah. The stickiest What's of the, in the garage. 
It's in the garage. They're dying bad. Uh, anyway. Yeah, and so also, now, Mike, where is your so steamer? Go bring it upstairs, load it up, and carry it downstairs. <laughs> I can't find the steamer trunk for our voyage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Carlos said I overpacked for this trip because I haven't been somewhere in a long time. Anyway, getting back to it. How do you overpack your dude? Yeah. I know. I know. I just. Uh, but yeah, I also, there's little... something that Oscar doesn't understand. And I used to get into this with when we traveled with <laughs> Charlie Broyhill to New York. He could bring the smallest suitcase. Backpack. And the thing is, is because your clothes are smaller. <laughs> they take up less room. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you pack an extra pair of jeans my size, you're right. stepping up to something that has to be checked. And when you're fat, you do a lot of costume changes, too. Of course. You well, want to have options, right? Am yes, I right about that? Of because course. Because you bring stuff. Is this going to make me look like uh, less of a manatee? And that's the way, uh, that's the way you, you do it. You have to walk so, that line of, well, maybe this is good enough to get into this restaurant. And the answer is always this. Tommy yeah, Bahama. Right. Do I look right. like I'm on Wicked Tuna right now? <laughs> <laughs> Wicked Pizza. Yeah, it should be a good trip. It may be a good trip. It might be a good trip. If it the, will be. You know, if the little monster, uh, you know, oh. modifies. Don't talk behavior. about her Lady that Gaga. way. Yeah, he's uh, Baby Gaga is uh, kind of like, a <laughs> but that's like, you know, because we're, we're just going to get to the end of our journey, you know, sit down with the Colburns with a cold one and just go, <laughs> Lego set. All right. Enjoy yeah. yourself. Thank you very much. That's what's going to happen. It so, sounds like a plan. We're set. It sounds like a plan, but it could go completely wrong. You know, uh, you know what I never got to? Please remind me to talk about this on Monday show. What's that? The social unacceptability of Animal House. I watched Animal House last night. And two it things doesn't came hold to up. Mind. No, 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 no. It is to me. It holds up for me okay. as still one of the fun. I laugh out loud yeah, at course. moments during Animal House. I find it that funny. I find it that socially uh, inept. The, the that I said uh, the the it's still so very funny. But I was listing the things that would not fly if it was a movie in 2018. It wouldn't mm -hmm. work. What are you looking at? I just, I just like sometimes I check to make sure we're still recording. Just a glance okay. to the right. I, I freaking hate it when you do that. Stop looking at the recording. Like somebody's got a gun. You've got you three know, other people crazy. here. <laughs> All right, very good. You focus uh, on the hot chick. No, I just want to. Because thanks for awesome. helping, Oscar. As always. Yeah, but it's like saying. your eyes go like that when you look. See, when you're a man your size with a with a head your size. Yes. <laughs> It, it's like a cat clock to And you know what? So I have to. I, all the details I have to agree okay. with Mike, and I apologize because when you're a valid part of the show, your absence is always missed. All right. Meanwhile, Stop. Oscar's over there eating and baking. Okay, thank you. All right, hey, here it is. It's always about food with you. So funny, funny. Judging Animal from House. the comments on Facebook, sometimes it's about food okay. with you too. Okay, last word, freak. I'm dealing with this guy. Jesus this guy. Christ! I'm trying to talk about Animal House here. Hi, right, how's the pressure? <laughs> All right. Uh, the the movie is very very funny, but I wrote down the things that would not be accepted. It has racial content that would not be accepted right. today. It has uh, sexual content, a lot of it that would not be accepted today. Not because it's got sex in it, but because the type of sex yes, that exactly. it's got. Because it's got cruel to, animal cruelty. Mm -hmm. It's got sex with a minor. Yes. Uh, so the racial part is one of the one of the. It's, it's talked about all the time that they even back then had a choice whether to put it in there. Right. When they go to the all uh, African American bar, right. And Otis, he loves us, and uh, and you know what are you studying primitive cultures? And then they do a quick cut to Otis Day in the Nights, which was you wouldn't have that in a movie no. today. It wouldn't Unacceptable. be acceptable. It wouldn't be acceptable. Uh, the Peeping Tom, uh, two ex instances of that. You've got John Belushi on the bleachers where Mandy Pepperidge is sitting there talking to her friend, and he's looking right up at their crotches. That's probably the worst uh, of a, the two, I would think. But well, he, but then you can make a case where the other thing where he takes the ladder, and I'm <laughs> sorry to laugh at this, yeah. and he's peeping through the window at the sorority house as they're taking their tops off, and then he moves over to where I think, once again, Mandy Pepperidge or one of the other girls yeah. is taking her bra off, and he, he takes the ladder. This is what... Why Animal House is funny because they thought, yeah, you don't want to, you, you didn't defy logic by having the ladder go, gush, gush, yes. gush, along the way. And it made no sense, but that's what made it funny because it's yeah. so loud and they enhanced the audio. Sure. They went the opposite way. I, I just, I it picture wasn't a production. stealth about it at all. No, it wasn't stealth. And I picture a production meeting where they said, well, wouldn't people, wouldn't they hear that? And I said, well, that's funny. Why don't we make it even louder? And they yes. make it so loud, and then he falls down. So you've got that. Then you've got the misogyny, which is, you know, the issue here isn't whether we yes, of took, course. took liberties with our female guests. We did. We did. And he winks at Dean Wormer. <laughs> that's misogyny. That kind of stuff would be on the borderline. And then animal cruelty, where they kill a horse. <laughs> and one of the greatest horse murders <laughs> of all time. 
the, uh, fracturingly funny. The in way words, it's he, handled he is... He shoots the blank gun into the air and the horse has a heart attack. It is... Uh, and a freeze yeah, frame. Yeah. yeah. And a freeze frame. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. So, anyway, that's all I wanted to say. That's it. That's my... Thank now you. I don't have to wait till Monday. That's okay. It still holds up. I'll remind you that you did it today. Thank you very much. Yeah, because I'll bring it again. Uh, we'll take a break <laughs> and come back with news you may not need on the Mike O'Mara Show. I saw you flash a smile. This week on the Michael Mara Bonus Show. Uh, you guys both will know this. Brands of gasoline. I will start with Sunoco. Texaco. Iowa brand. Come and go. <laughs> and it's spelled <laughs> like... It's, yeah. It's, yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, okay. uh, sorry. <laughs> that should be the highlight of the bonus show today. Uh, the Michael Mara Bonus Show. Because five hours a week just Come ain't enough. <laughs> Always available at MichaelMaraShow.com. Welcome bonus. back to the Mike O'Mara Show, everybody. It's birthday season. Yes. And you know what that means. What does it mean, Mike? It's almost the 4th of July. Oh. Yes. America is celebrating a birthday. <laughs> and you can celebrate, too, with a TMOS bonus package. Declare your independence from boredom <laughs> with a weekly, uncensored, commercial-free sixth hour of TMOS fun. Each and every week, we light the comedy fuse and fill your senses with multicolored explosions of hilarity <laughs> and big booms of bombastic joy. You'll get access to all of our bonus content, and there's almost zero chance of you blowing your fingers off. <laughs> when in the course of human events it becomes necessary to laugh your ass off, mm. sign up for the TMOS bonus package. Thomas, and Je Thomas Jefferson called it witty. John Adams <laughs> called it delightfully revolved. Yes. And Ben Franklin said it was funny <laughs> as a hat full of assholes. <laughs> God. Ben, awesome. just go to MikeOmeraShow.com. And I knew I know him, mm -hmm. so I didn't read ahead, but I knew when I read Ben Franklin. Well, he was just, he was a naughty guy that Ben he Franklin. Was. Yeah, syphilis. Just go to MikeOmeraShow.com. Click the bonus banner; it makes a great gift. Spread some cheer, bonus show style. <laughs> get happy by giving back. So please quit sucking and get the bonus show, everybody. News. News. And now, a somewhat mediocre news you may not need. ABC. Let me turn my microphone up. ABC is bringing back Lost oh. as a reality show. Hey! Ooh. It actually sounds like a uh, cross between uh, Castaway and Survivor. Here's how it works. Twelve contestants will be dropped alone on a string of islets in Indonesia. And uh, they'll have to survive on washed-up luggage, scattered resources, and abandoned structures as if they survive some kind of disaster. Mm. I'm sorry, but I'm intrigued. Hey, I, this, I is on a, this is on ABC? Uh, yeah, it's ABC. You know who'd be good on this show? Michael Fishman. Yes, that's right. Get yes, DJ from that's the Roseanne right. show. Guaranteed uh, rating. He's open. Yes, he's got the five. The contestants yeah. won't know at first that they're not the only ones playing. Over the course of the show, they'll come to learn there are... Others. Others? Uh, remember that word uh, from Lost, but they won't know where or how many there are. Also, the action will be mixed with documentary-style flashbacks of the contestants' lives before they left for the show, like Lost. I, this I'm is okay with fascinating. It. <laughs> My yeah. God. I'm with him. I'm yeah, with him, you know, it does sound, it sounds like a good turn on it, and I had, we remember we had the same reaction when they first told us the, the basis of the yeah. show Survivor 20 years ago, because nothing like it had ever been done. The thing that's so crazy is that if we get to really see them discover there are other people on the mm -hmm. island, and they don't know there's other people yeah. on the island, that's dynamite right there. Or they right find there. the bunker with a clock. That's right. Mm -hmm. Very cool. That's right, or the very, soccer very ball. Very, cool. I'm in. Uh, we're constantly <laughs> complaining that nothing original comes out of Hollywood anymore. Well, if you feel that way, too, then I'd better uh, see you at the movies when Steve Carell's new flick comes out. I watched a trailer of this. I'm not going to commit to saying it's going to be great, but I think it has the potential to be big. Uh, it's called Welcome to Marwin. It, and from the trailer that I saw this yeah. morning, it looks like a very unique story. Steve plays Mark Hogenkamp. He is a man who barely survives being beaten by a gang of neo-Nazis. Uh, he copes by making World War II doll villages. He's an artist, and okay. he makes a World War II. He can't, he can't uh, draw anymore, and so he makes his art by putting together doll villages, and he calls the doll village Marwin. It includes a doll soldier based on him, 
and he's protected by the village's badass women. This is really out there, but it's fascinating. Wild. And it's based in part on a true story. All the dolls are based on real people he knows, including his attackers. The most interesting thing about the story is that it is real. Uh, or I should, it's based on reality. Yeah. There is, uh, really is a Mark Hogan camp who was beaten by Nazis and created a World War II doll village populated by the people around him. So it looks quirky. It looks CGI-ish. It looks weird. But it also looks like it could be an amazing smash. He has, made some, he has made some pretty good choices in his motion picture career, Steve yeah. Carell. And this I, one's I, out there. This I one, the trailer to see it. is almost impossible to get your head around, and that's what I liked about it. Can't a wait. Philadelphia Phillies fan named Kathy McVeigh Went to a game against St. Louis on Monday, and she got hit right between the eyes with a flying hot dog. <laughs> uh, that's right. It was shot out of a hot dog cannon by the Philly fanatic mascot. Kathy says, quote, it just came out of nowhere and hard. She looks like what you would think she looks like. Uh, he shot it in our direction, and bam, it hit me like a ton of bricks. Uh, the blow messed up her face pretty good. Her yeah. face. Hey, you uh, so bruised? She, she had to go to the hospital. She isn't considering legal action, but she wants And she's so sweet. She was really sweet about mm. it. But she wants fans to be aware of how dangerous flying hot dogs can be because the Phillies wrap them in duct tape. Duh. Oh, oh my oh. God, they do? This is a massive cannon. I mean, that they shoot into the crowd from the field. Duct tape? This is, you know, this is not the bungee cord thing. Yeah. This is, this is pretty intense. And she was, she has a black eye. Oh my she has a complete God. red mark on the side. She could have, uh, she could have put her eye out. Wow. <laughs> God, <laughs> boy, lady. Dog. It's fascinating. America's most prominent fried chicken restaurants finally, finally getting in on the fried chicken and waffles trend that exploded a decade ago. KFC just started testing a chicken and waffles combo at two stores in North Carolina. Mm. And one, uh, they wanted to branch out, so they put the other one in South Carolina. Oh, the Carolinas uh, are pretty much covered then. If you order the combo, you get two square Belgian waffles and two pieces of fried chicken plus some butter-flavored syrup. Eat up, everybody. Mm. Uh, I've never been a chicken and waffles guy, but I know uh, people dig it. And uh, Great flavor, well, great flavor it, combination. If uh, KFC will expand the item to other cities by the end of July. Let me race through these last two here. According to a new study, the average parent uh, only lasts 13 days into their kid's summer break before they go nuts. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, very good. Seems high. And now, a little something something. Apparently, there is a new form of chewable Viagra that will soon be available in England. Uh, <laughs> England? England. The firm Blue Chew has mm. created these mm. new chewables that apparently work much faster than regular Viagra. Ah. Uh, Dr. Alex Jovanovich, uh, the co-founder of the U.S. company, is planning to launch the uh, little chewables in the U.K. soon, and he says, Blue Chew makes the process affordable, convenient, and discreet for those who don't want to take pills but still want the confidence of being at their best. Ooh. Sure. Uh, so Ooh. that's it. We'll see that in the U.K. Maybe we'll see it in the United States. I'm frankly surprised they went with chewables. I was thinking they'd go with... Hard candy. Ah! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, we'll take a break and uh, we'll come back with the uh, audio vault. Rob Spiewak right here on the Michael Mara Show. It's Political Persuasion. Hey, it's Freights. This week on Political Persuasions, Mike and I talk about the Trump administration's policy of separating immigrants crossing the border illegally from their children. There's a ray of light in local journalism, and you get some of my outtakes. You won't want to miss it. You can download Political Persuasions at politicalpersuasions.com, iTunes, Stitcher, and wherever fine podcasts are found. Uh, you know, after that conversation with Ma Marcus, I have to say, you know... Uh, Please, please listen to political persuasions. Uh. I'm surprised it's still on with the lack of the support from the network. I don't understand. Uh, welcome back to the Mike O'Mara Show. Shop on Amazon. Everybody does it. It's easy. It saves money. It's a no-brainer. But we do need you to use your brain. And remember to access the site by clicking the Amazon link at the top of the TMOS website. That will guarantee we get credit for your purchase, so start clicking because if you need it, Amazon has it. What is today's Amazon purchase of the day as we fly through the end of this show, Rob Spiewak? This comes from the files of things that I did not get for Father's Day. This is an amazing thing. It was released within the week. It is a vinyl box set, the Rolling Stones studio album collection, 1971 to 2016. Every album from Sticky Fingers to Blue and Lonesome, all remastered, all on 180 gram vinyl, all mastered at half speed, 20 LPs. I've searched everywhere, and the best price, Amazon. Cool. If you're starting to build your vinyl collection, this is a must-have Rolling Stones music. 
Amazon really does have everything. You can find the Stones albums and more at the top of MikeOmeraShow.com. It makes, uh, make sure we get credit. It costs you nothing. So now go spend money. Let's open up. No, oh. that's not what I wanted to play. Better. That's what I wanted to play. Boom. Thank you very much. Bam. Open up the audio. I still occasionally check out uh, Perez Hilton's website. Oh, nice. And uh, at the top of it, apparently, you know, Pete Davidson now uh, engaged to Ariana Grande. Yes. And I'm going to play a tape of him in a second. I didn't that's going know viral. that. <laughs> Everybody knows that. <laughs> but, uh, Apparently, he has a legend. He's packing, legendarily so. And they're saying that's one of the reasons why the oh, relationship that's, is that's working. probably not true. Man, I wish there was a rumor about that with me. Yeah. I'll start one. Yeah? Yeah. I'm packing. Isn't that yeah, what Mike's they always say today. when an ugly guy dates a beautiful woman? Probably. <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah. I know it's not true. All right, but anyway, here is uh, Pete Davidson last night on The Tonight Show <laughs> talking about what it's like when people... Mike, that All is right. really unsettling. <laughs> I'm sorry. Sorry Don't about that. Don't do that, okay? Sorry. Is it sorry. in? Stop! Yeah. Oh! <laughs> and you say I go too far. I, I know. Yeah. Sorry. All right. Uh, Pete Davidson on The Tonight Show. I feel like I won a contest. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sick. How are, you, how are you handling it all right now? It's lit, Jimmy. <laughs> It's so the, lit. You t- it's so funny walking down the street because like dudes are walking by and they're like, yeah. <laughs> like you, ever see, you ever see that Derek Jeter commercial yeah. where he was like retiring and everybody just tips his hat? <laughs> it feels like that. Yeah. Some dude goes to me. He's like, "Yo, man, you like gave me hope." <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I didn't know I was that. Beautiful. Oh my God, you Jesus. So that's good for them, and that's I think they will both elevate line. each other. I think they will, as far as I love fame. self-deprecating humor when it's done brilliantly. Mm-hmm. That was that's a Very beautiful. Cool. You gave me hope. That's uh, fantastic. Comedians <laughs> in cars with getting coffee. I think the fifth season is coming back, and they put a trailer up. It's a very clever trailer. It's made to look like an old car ad. This year, practically everyone is coming out with brand new, even longer, more complicated shows. Don't you have enough to keep track of? Without trying to remember, who's a wizard? Who's a machine? Who's a zombie? We comedians in cars getting coffee think your time is valuable. Our average episode is only 14 minutes long. Unlike our competitors, we're not trying to take you away from all you have to do. We think your life is pretty good. And we want you to get back to it. We think one car, two comedians, and some coffee is plenty. We like to think short. Comedians in cars getting coffee. No royalty, no robots, no costumes. And they've got a really great lineup this year. It's a, I saw Kate McKinnon, Tracy Morgan, the late Jerry Lewis mm-hmm. is interviewed, uh, oh, wow. Dana right. Carvey, lots of good people. So make sure you check that out. Oh, Mike, I've pulled this because of your upcoming weekend activities. You'll probably get free ice cream if you do that tour at Ben & Jerry's. Yep. But you won't if you go to Three's Lux in New York City. They have just debuted the world's most expensive milkshake. It's in the Guinness Book of World Records. It costs 100 bucks. Here's Chef Joe Calderon describing it. And this restaurant, I'm sorry, Serendipity Three's Lux Milkshake. Serendipity Three is the name of the restaurant. Here we have our Jersey Cream, and these are from cows originally bred in the Channel Island, and this breed is popular for the high butterfat content. We have Devonshire Clotted Cream. It's made from heating milk at a slow pace till all the golden cream rises. Next we have our Madagascar vanilla. The plants from this vanilla bean take three years to mature. And Hello. here we have our Tahitian vanilla ice cream. It's Very made good. with Tahitian vanilla beans that are sun cured. We're gonna plate these with 23 karat edible gold to give the inside of the milkshake a little bling to match the outside. Right. Cremose baldizzone which is donkey caramel sauce. It's a very rare sauce made with Venezuelan cocoa, Piedmont hazelnuts, fresh donkey milk, and cane sugar. He said donkey milk. Mm. Donkey milk. Donkey milk. I'm intrigued. (laughs) I'm not so sure. I don't know that donkey milk is- I've been to the Serendipity- uh, Oh, you have? When it was Serendipity 2, right? Right. When it was briefly here in Georgetown. Mm -hmm. Uh, And the building was in a very historic building. And I remember Shannon and I walking in because we had heard like this big to do about this restaurant that came from New York. Yeah. Right. Went in there, and the one thing about DC you'll never change, and for some reason people will never spend the money to get because it's expensive. Yeah. Is right. we walked into what is a little like restaurant, but really known for their desserts. Yeah. And they had no AC. 
They just had fans. <laughs> what? That's just a fans. great insight right there. No AC. See? I'm that's s- it. I'm sitting there with my, my Sunday and it's melting, and I'm like, this is not yeah. gonna last. Yeah. The greatest the town in the world. <laughs> uh, rip off the consumer all you want, but uh don't pay attention to the HVAC. Right? You dicks. <laughs> not God. All right. right. Let's close with this. I don't play a lot of stuff from Samantha B's show, but this was so funny. Apparently on Full Frontal, she doesn't get a lot of support from her family, especially her father. Okay. And so she brought on Mark Hamill, as you know, Luke Skywalker, but now he's very successful as a voice actor. Mm-hmm. Mark Hamill reading actual emails from Samantha Bee's father on Full Frontal. Sam, you should audition for Saturday Night Live. Now that's a funny show. My DVR is full. I will buy a second so I don't miss your show Full Frontal. Love you, Dad. Is Castle still on? Saw you on Kimmel. He is so funny. I <laughs> loved your episode yesterday about women's stuff. <laughs> Try talking about men sometimes. We watch TV too. I don't oh like the way God. Colbert shook your hand last time. Too handsy. LOL. <laughs> You can have that for your show, by the way. Sam, I don't think I'm a pancake person anymore, and I mean it this time. Do you know Castle from Castle? What channel is Castle on? Castle, Fox he likes. News asked me to come on and talk about you. Can you believe that? I said yes. <laughs> I love I just think it's fantastic. <laughs> That's your magic oh, audio no. ball. Have a great Thursday, everybody. There is nobody in show business that cannot relate to that. That is fantastic. Wow. I oh, said yes. God. I said yes. Sir. <laughs> Go on, Fox, everybody. That's it, people. Thanks for joining us for the Mike O'Mara Show. Don't forget to listen 24-7 on our new play pod app. All snail mail for the show can be sent to Mike O'Mara Show, Box 32101, Washington, D.C., 2007. Each day, on average, 96 Americans. Americans lose their lives because of a gun. Check out every town for gun safety and find out how you can end the tragedy of gun violence for good. For Oscar Santana and Rob Spiewak, this is Mike O'Mara. Enjoy inviting you to join the guys tomorrow. I will be uh, taking a long weekend mm-hmm. for my 59th birthday. Happy birthday! So I'll be celebrating with the fam. I thank the guys for covering with a brand new show. Uh, their special guest will be Marcus Serta. No. That'll be coming up tomorrow <laughs> on the program. Uh, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye, everybody. So long. Ciao, ciao. Transportation for the Mike O'Mara Show provided by DTS Worldwide Transportation, serving Maryland, D.C., Virginia, and worldwide. The leader in luxury chauffeured transportation since 1990. Call them at 800-914-2855. Mike O'Mara Radio Entertainment.